Okay, on to Sunday's action. It is really all about the Irish racing, but we'll talk about Sandown because Santini's there. Horse I've loved since he was a novice hurdler. I fancied him for an Albert Bartlett. I fancied him for an RSA. I'm, I'm struggling to fancy him for a Gold Cup now, but you know he's a horse that's always promised to be something special, so maybe this will be his time. Um, it's an intermediate chase. There's certain conditions within there, but he faces Talk is Cheap, who ran... I think he ran at Newbury behind Lost in Translation and Le Bagawar in the chase race that Champ won. Obviously Champ won it this year, they ran in it last year. But it's important to remember that the talk is cheap won the three mile five handicap round Sandown and absolutely hacked up. So we know that he handles Sandown. Those railway fences down the back come thick and fast. Santini's jumping will be tested, but it wouldn't be a worry of mine for him. Three mile the race on Sunday, so you know, you'd like to see Santini be winning that if he's gonna be a Gold Cup horse. He was so impressive at Newbury on his chase debut last year. I was told that he'd only been out of the field and onto the race course. We hadn't really done much work, so you know that makes it even more impressive. He had a foot issue around about this festival last year, so there's excuses for why he didn't win an RSA. Um, I just I want to see him go and hack up in that race on Sunday, but it is by no means a gimme. I do think the main threat is talk is cheap, and I do think really that Santini should be winning that pretty comfortably. But onto the Irish action, which is the one that we really, really want to get to see on Sunday. It is as good as Saturday, if not better. Um, I'll do this in a slightly different order, I think. I'm probably going to talk about the feature race first. We'll talk about Apples Jade and the Liz Mullen Hurdle. Um, she took this race last year. I think she, she might have even won it the year before. If not, she's going to be going for a couple of Atoms Grace. You know, she wins all the time this time of year. Um, she's had a minor wind up. She's just, she's unbeatable in that, so she'll just be class to watch. You know, bar incident, she will absolutely hose up in that and it'll be good to watch and it'll be good to see her back. And then we'll everyone will be talking again about whether she should have another crack at a champion idol. But, you know, that's for another day. Um, oh, there's, there's good racing. Beginner's Chase, Melon, I'll have to talk about. Because ever since I saw Melon's race in France, there's a video clip of him going against the other horse and he looks twice the size. Now, obviously, the other horses are probably caught up with him a bit now, but I still think he's always looked like he was going to be a chaser. After the Supreme, I would have liked to see him go over fences then, so had an anti-post tickle on the Arkle, that fell foul when he went in the Champion Hurdle and ran second. That then put Paige from going over fences the season after, because obviously you're second in the Champion Hurdle, you've got to have another crack at it, and that's exactly what they've done. He's come second in another Champion Hurdle after a pretty poor campaign last year. Um, fences will be the make of this horse, it's not an afterthought, they would have been considering it from a long time out. I just hope it revives him. I just don't hope he hasn't lost love for the game and he's it's too far gone now after a couple of mediocre, you know, seasons after that supreme run. But you know, I'm in I'm in Melon's camp big style here. Um Fakir Dudery is the lurker in there. Um sent off favourite for the Supreme, ran fourth, ran very creditably there, ran behind Pentland Hills, um I think he ran really well at Punchestown as well. He's gonna get a weight for age allowance here, so I think he gets eight pounds and that could be, uh, will be, a big, big help to him. Um, he's got he's had two chase starts in France as well, so a bit of experience there. But Willie Mullins wouldn't have sent Melanie without sticking him over fences. I wouldn't have been surprised if they stuck him over fences before. We know with the thought that they could have sent him to an arc or sooner. Um, I mean, hand on heart, I'd be disappointed, I'd be gutted if Melon doesn't win that race. But obviously, Fakir Dudery is a genuine threat. Um, that's going to be a massive shake up to the Arkle market if one of them goes and hoses up. So that's a fantastic race to watch. That's over two mile one. Um, the four Trier chase. So that probably would have been a better one to go on to, given that is a grade two. I reckon we'll have to look at what the market does there, but I, I reckon we might get a price on Bally Oshin because of the fact that a Plutard's in there and due to Denevra. So both of those horses are decent. A Plutard was obviously the handicap blot of the century when he hacked up at Cheltenham. Really, really impressive, really, really emphatic win. Tiger Roll was the only one that was probably more convincing. But we have to consider that. I think he ran off of a, I think it was a mark of 144, which, looking back now, was just obscene. Much better horse than that. He'd shown it last year. Um, he was a five-year-old chasing, and, you know, he'd shown that he was class. He was getting some allowances, and, you know, he made a few mistakes. But, you know, that, that sort of age, they're allowed to come off, come forward for it quite a bit. So really this season will be the real acid test for him. I tend to find those sorts of horses might plateau a little bit into this second season. Froden did a little bit as well, and it's normally the year after they sort of thrive. But anyway, I, I, I think Bally Oshin could end up being a price here. So he won off 
a top weight in a handicap, 162 I think he was, so compare the difference there between that and a Plutard. He obviously wasn't as impressive as a Plutard, but he was impressive. Um, he'd run in a couple of handicap hurdles after, it would have been a lenient mark, but he's always struggled over hurdles. I think he's a proper, proper horse, he's a proper two-miler. Um, yeah, I'm hoping the bookies would give us a bit of a price on that. I, it's hard to say um, with any confidence because I don't want to give any sort of leading suggestions to anyone else that's looking on here. But yeah, I think I think we might be able to get a bit of a price on Belushin. If he's a short price favourite, then I wouldn't be keen to be going in. But I, I think he should be favourite. And certainly if he's not, then he probably would be a backable price. Um, Juju Geneva doesn't win often enough for me. You know, he won an arc when he won it by a good way. He is a good horse. Um, another one that will be better as he goes on. But I just think at the moment, Badio Sheen took this race last year and absolutely bolted up. It'd be madness if he wasn't favourite. I think odds against would be fair. Um, and like I said, we might get a bit of a price about him. But enough about that. And you can tell which ones I like, can't you? But enough about that. We'll move on to the... I don't you know what, I'm going to do the bumper. I'm going to go all over the shop. So the bumper's exciting because of Energamine. So this was a horse that I fancy for the champion bumper last year. Didn't make it out, and I'd guess that was on account of the ground. It's raining, it's wet, it's a bog. If he needed some giving the ground, then surely he's got it tomorrow, Sunday. Um, so yeah, I think he's really, really interesting. He's a point winner, that's all the form we've got to go by. And then the real sort of match-up, I think, in there is that Fakir Delan of Gordon Elliott. It's Jamie Coddle Ride. He's a point winner. He was an impressive point winner. They both look classy. Um, so the difference in the age there, Energamine's going to be a year older. I think, anyway, I'm sure he is. Maybe even two. No, I think he'll be a year older. Anywho, Energamine's going to be older. I like Energamine. We'll see what they have to do. That'll be a class race between the two of them. Um, Dexter Tiger would be interesting of a debutant that hasn't really run not too much to go on by breed in there um, one down Gigginstown now there is some stuff to go on breed in there he's a full brother to the game changer so at least we know he'll be half decent so we've got some point form for the first two that I've mentioned I do suspect it's a match between that, them, them two um, it would be fascinating to see which one of them comes out on top I reckon it'll be close um, but oh, I, don't know, I want an ergamine to win uh, go back right to the beginning now, the grade uh, three, I think it is, Novices Hurdle, the for auction Novices Hurdle, we've got Abracadabras in there, so some real good bumper form from last year, will be on plenty of people's watch list for this season, you can understand why, made a really pleasing Hurdles debut, uh, jumping was a little bit novice but Gordon Elliott had a recent stable um, tour over the last couple of days for the start of the sort of campaign for Irish racing and he did say that this horse has been jumping better. I think he expects a bold show from him and as I touched on on the Saturday section, Elliot normally flies this time of year. So Abacadabras is probably the one to beat. Um, fast bucks in there for Willie Mullins, a bit of an in and out one, you'd be disappointed if he was the best in here. Um, and he did his winning over the summer so the rain's a bit of a concern for me. Um, latest exhibitions one that I'm really interested for, for Paul Nolan. So um, he beat Bray side of Gordon Elliott's and he's beaten Thatsy of Gordon Elliott's. Now I think that Thatsy's a pretty tidy horse. I watched that race, um, didn't have anything on. Short price Thatsy was, to be fair. Um, and Thatsy just didn't find a lot after the last. But the two pulled well clear and I think this latest exhibition is a well above average horse. So it's one of those, if they thought he could be up for sale, he might be the sort of horse that gets picked up by a JP. But I, he wouldn't be a back number in this. Um, but Abacadabras is going to be all the rage, I imagine. Um, and then the maiden hurdle we've got in there, which is over two and a half, Andy Dufresne, so, or Dufresne, I don't know how to say it. I think he's from a TV show, but I don't watch it. Um, he was brilliant. He's the Camilla Sharple story from Gordon Elliott's sort of pin hooker thing. She picked him up quite cheap, managed to sell him after his point for 300 plus thousand pounds. I think she used the deposit from the house that she was going to buy to buy this horse. She sold him and she bought a house. So it's brilliant just for the fact of that story anyway. Um, he won a bumper really really nicely last year to justify it or I think he looks like an absolute weapon so you'd think he's the one to well he should be winning it shouldn't he um we've got Cobbler's Way in there he's a nice horse um so I think he's a genuine threat um and then we've got Eden Flight for Mullins, Riki and Townend um it's just interesting to see him starting out around about this trip is the thing for me with that one um you know, they can start them anywhere. Sometimes they're running a bump, all those sorts of things. But two miles for a first start for Mullins, or two and a half, slightly interesting. Um, Andy Dufresne is the one to beat. Andy Dufresne could be a headline act. And you just think on Sunday that actually we could have Santini bolted up, 
an ergamine going in and finally doing something, or Fakir Delan could be the next best thing. We could have Melon, Fakir Dudri, one of them two going out and becoming the anti-post favourite for the Arkle, which will definitely happen, whoever of those two wins. Bally Sheen could go in and pay for the rest of the week. We could have Andy Defresny going in there and putting his, well, sort of staking his claim for a Ballymore title, potentially. Um, Apples J, back to her best, hopefully. And then we could see Ab Abacadabras go on from that maiden hurdle that he won. Um, and turn himself into something special, or we could see latest exhibitions pull off a little bit of a shock. So there's some great racing. I'll keep doing the write-ups. I'll try and get as many of these done as I can. Obviously, it's time. Life gets in the way, but good luck for whatever you do this weekend, and enjoy the racing.